Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, I got a little project that I need to do and I'm going to bring you along. Um, for those of you who have been watching the live stream, you know that in the last couple months or so, I've been training to learn a new task, uh, a new position, if you will, at work. Uh, basically, this particular, you know, the department I'm in, uh, everybody is trained to operate the equipment. But there are some tasks that are beyond the, just the operation of the equipment. And they've been teaching me some of these tasks because there's maybe only one or two people that actually do it. And they want me to be a backup in case somebody is sick or somebody calls, you know, goes on vacation or just leaves the department. And I've been working pretty hard on that for the past couple months. Basically, the position that I'm training for at work um, is the person that makes sure that all of the supplies, all of the ingredients that we need to make our product are in the right place at the right time. And I'm not going to go too much into detail, but what, it, what ends up happening then is after the product is produced, it's put onto pallets and put onto a shelf in the warehouse. And sometimes I gotta go find a particular pallet on a shelf. And these shelves are five racks high. Each one of them holds a pallet that's five feet tall. So uh, the top shelf in the warehouse is 25 feet up. Now we have labels on the outside of the product pallets that we make that say what it is, what's in it, and you know, where where in the job it was made but sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly where a particular pallet is because one thing i can't see the writing on the labels when it's 25 feet up in the air and i've been thinking about this for a while i want to go over and see if i can find something at a sporting goods store like a, a pair of binoculars or something that I could use to read these labels off of the pallets when they're high up on the shelf. It would sure make my job easier and I know other people have done it and it's worked out well for them. So what I want to do today is run over to a couple of our local uh, sporting goods stores. There's a couple like outdoorsy type stores. Now we're really lucky here in Waco. We have two really good outdoorsy type stores. We have Cabela's and we have Academy Sports. And so I want to take a little trip to both of these places and see if if they can help me uh, I think like I said I can just find something that's like not even a pair of binoculars but just a monocular that will allow me to see something that's maybe as little as five ten feet away from me and as far as 25 feet away from me like I say uh, you know I think that someone at one of these sporting goods stores will be able to recommend something and I'll be able to find something that will work so let me uh, go over there and let's see what we can find Oh, and it looks like we may be getting a little interesting weather here too, so maybe we'll cover a little bit of that on this vlog. So I started off over at Academy Sports and really couldn't get anyone to help me with it. It turns out uh, their scopes and that kind of stuff are on the same rack as their guns. And unfortunately, guns are bigger sellers, so that's what they were really focusing their attention on. And I really couldn't get anyone to give me any attention. Now, I knew over at Cabela's that binoculars and stuff are kind of in the same area as the guns, but not in the same rack so I could actually find somebody that would actually help me I found something that's relatively inexpensive that's another advantage what I was looking at over at uh, Academy the cheapest thing was gonna be like hundred ninety nine dollars I found something for about eighty dollars here that I think is gonna work uh, pretty well for me um, I was looking at stuff in the store and was able to pretty clearly read what was going on uh, on labels and stuff like that now they have a, actually something on the other end of the store that's really designed for the really, really high power binoculars that, you know, I couldn't even come close to seeing, you know, because they were like 300 feet away. I could see that there was something there, but I couldn't clearly read it. But at the distance I needed to be able to look, I could see what I needed. So I got what I uh, came for. Let's uh, take it home and I'll show you what I got. So while I was wandering around Cabela's, I actually found some socks too that I need. There's a certain kind of sock that I like to wear uh, that kind of go, go halfway up my calves and just basically white socks that I, I kind of wear with anything. And I used to get them like at Costco, but there isn't a Costco within like 100 miles of here. So I've been kind of on the lookout for these kinds of socks and found them over at Cabela's. So I figured I'm going to buy buy a packet of them and let's see if I like them and if, if I do then I can go back and get more at some other point but 
this is the uh, scope that I got. And like I said, I wanted something that was just going to be small and yet powerful enough that I was going to be able to see what I'm looking at. Uh, and, you know, look at pallet tags when they're way up high. And I think this is going to be able to do it. Uh, basically, I looked in the store, found something that was like 25 feet away, and looked, looked at it through the scope. And while I couldn't read it with the naked eye, I could very clearly read it with this. So we tried it. It wasn't a horribly expensive thing. And uh, hopefully this will make, a little bit e make it a little bit easier to find things in the warehouse. I, since that's going to be a part of my job, I guess I kind of need to be able to do that, right? So let me take it out of the box and show it to you. All right, so this is the thing here, and actually it's nice and small. It's got a 25x magnification, which uh, is pretty good. Um, I, I was able to like uh, focus in on those posters on the wall over there and clearly read the text on them. So I'm hoping that this will will come in handy and, uh, you know, like I said, help me uh, do my job a little bit better. Now, one of the things I kind of like about it too, kind of surprised me, I'd hope there'd be some sort of a pouch that came with it. And there is, and this one's got a little belt loop, so I can put this on my belt and carry it around with me. And that's gonna make it really convenient to have too, because now I don't have to put it in my pocket, I can just put it in this little, little pouch here and carry it around that way. So, I don't know, I think uh, this is gonna be a good option for me. And, uh, I don't know, I'll give you a report and let you know what happens. And for now, uh, what I'm going to do is just spend the rest of the day and looking forward to the storm that's supposedly coming in. We're actually in a tornado warning area, so, yeah, this might be interesting. You know how much I love severe weather. Garden's still doing good. Um, watering this side uh, pretty regularly in order to you know get it good and established so those are my brussels sprouts and my cauliflower i've got the water turned off to the uh, chili peppers though because the chili peppers tend to like it a little bit drier i watered them uh, extensively right when i put them in the ground but now like i said i turned the valve off here so we're only watering this side because i want to water this every day you know just to make sure that it gets nice and healthy and has a good start so that we get a good good harvest this year uh, but yeah, garden's going well. Can you taste the fire? So anyway, it's the next day and those thunderstorms that I were kind of hoping would come through here uh, never really materialized, at least not here. Um, there were about an hour, an hour or so before some storms came through the area. I saw them coming in on radar and I said, okay, well, there's two of them I see. One of them looks like it's gonna probably pass a little north of Waco. And the other one I thought looked like it was on a collision course for Waco. So it looked like that one would be the one that would be interesting. And in fact, both of those storms were kind of running neck and neck, moving uh, west to east. And uh, they were both supposed to hit about the same time. And as I watched the one that uh, I, I thought was aiming at Waco actually ended up turning a little bit and going south of us and both of them however were making my weather radio go crazy for the last uh, couple of hours and uh, you know because multiple tornado watches that's like the highest thing there is until they've actually spotted something on the ground that means that that the storm is powerful enough that there's rotation going on in the clouds and that it could generate a tornado at any time so there were two of those that happened, one about 20 miles north of me, one about 20 miles south of me, but we didn't get a speck of rain here. So uh, I don't think either of those storms actually created a tornado, but you know, I would have loved to have had a good storm blow through here. That would have been kind of fun. You know how much I enjoy that. So um, you know what, that's just sometimes what happens with the weather. You can't predict the weather. So it just, it's gonna do what it's gonna do. And in this case, it did what it did. So um, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up for this day. Um, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.